Uh, I invite uh, the next chair, Dr. Pratap Kumar and Dr. Kane. Dr. Pillai, please. Before the next session, I am just requesting everybody to check out the hotel by 12 o'clock. The last time of check out is 12 o'clock. And the master's presentation, actually, we will invite Dr. Sumit Suji to present the first speech. Please, Dr. Sumit Suji. Okay, thank you. Can I start? Thank you. So today's my talk is how to assess the channel. Already you saw the, the channel tracking, the epicardial tracking with the Yamane Sensei. But uh, I summarize uh, how to do it. And it, we have the many types. This is the same presentation slide with the day before yesterday, but uh, important. So I do show the again. Of course, the septal channel, but uh, we can have the more possibility of doing the retrograde with many types. AV group, uh, so-called uh, AC channel as well, and the LV surface from the diagonal to the, the OM, posterior lateral, circumflex posterior lateral, and also the right coronary posterior lateral, and the apical, apical mainly the connected the distal LAD to the distal PDA, and the light ventricular surface, RV branch to the LAD, and the corners branch. Corners branch, not so frequently used, but the, Rarely, sometimes I work for the retrograde. And a Kugel, Kugel is the inside of the heart. Now, this is my, the already show in the day before yesterday. So this is my, the preliminary, the, the data, success rate of the each channel, without, except the acceptor. Epicardial channel success rate is almost 50%. So that is why I tried the more and more the channels. So three channels or four channels, the kind of the attempt makes the final success rate, increase the final success rate as I talked to you the before. So each, for the each channel, how to improve the success rate and then how to the decrease the, the trouble. That is a based on nice assessment of the channel. Very important principle is uh, looking straight without overlap. So each channel have the different anatomy. So we must use a different projection angle. Of course, the septal. Septal using the area of view at the beginning to check the, the first, the basic information with a guiding caster shot with the area not the LAO, because LAO, many, many septals overlap. So we cannot assess precisely with the guiding cancer the injection with the aerial view. But after advancing the microcaster, I strongly recommend, of course, aerial view and also aerial view. Because that, in this situation, microcaster already isolated the channel. So no overlap, without the overlap, we can check the LAO, the projection angle. And this is a two orthogonal view. Sometimes happen is like this. LAO looks straight, but the LAO have the, some bending part. So LAO, it's okay. Looks okay, easy, the search for, and the try, it's okay, but if, when the wire stuck inside the channel, stop, do not push more. Stop and then check again with aerial view. Aerial view can show the different findings. And also aerial, uh, I'm sorry, the, in the aerial view, not using just only the straight aerial. In the segment close to the LAD, Straight looking is not a straight area, but the area cranial, okay? Because here, straight is this direction. Like that, in the segment close to the PDA, 
mainly caudal is straight looking, and sometimes this part. This part is final part connecting to the PDA. This is again cranial. It's the best position angle sometimes. So changing the angle and which one is a more straight looking. Check it and then assess. This is a very important. This is one case of RAO looks straight, but the LAO not a straight. Can you see it? In this case, the, my younger colleague tried to negotiate this channel, but I cannot, because bending here. And then this bending never assess in the RAO. This is a magnified view. So small, small something here. This is this one, completely hairpin. Okay, so when the your wire stuck, please do not push more and stop and reassess with different angle. Otherwise, your wire easy to punk out from here. And then perforated, it's okay. Septal perforation almost never makes a cardiac tampon, but you completely lose the chance of the truck in this channel. So assessment is very important. And then this is also, I already talked in the last session, but the, again, I emphasize the tip injection. Please do the tip injection, not the blind procedure. See the target, make clear the target, and select the pro appropriate wire and gentle procedure. That makes uh, improving the success rate of the channel tracking. Epicardial channel, which projection angle is needed? For the every surface, straight looking is always area or epicranial and the left lateral. Left lateral is area 90 degree or 95 degree, something like that. At the time, the especially diagonal to the sarcomax OM or PL connection is a very clear in the LL, left lateral. And sometimes the area caudal is good projection. For the AV group, LAO, LAO straight or LAO caudal, LAO cranial, at the time, please check it by yourself with changing the projection angle, which is the best. And then sometimes the area cranial shows the, the other, the findings. Apical, Area caudal, area cranial, and then straight AP, straight AP also. I'm sorry, I forget to show it. And the RB surface, also AP, and then the RO. But this kind of that, more many, many, the variation there. So each channel have the each best potential angle. So please check it and then try it like this. And another very unique the option is using the ballooning. Stop the collateral, dominant collateral flow. This is the one case, area total occlusion. Okay? And then, area views. Uh, I'm sorry, LCA shot showing very big collateral connection from the the LED distal to the PDA. This is dominant, but uh, this is too much torture. Previously, the, we tried, but uh, failed. So how to assess other collateral channels? With this collateral flow, we cannot see the others. So what did it is, well, this is circumflex. Maybe something here, but I cannot see, and then, also, septal channel, almost not invisible, like this, invisible, no connection there, looks sound, but very unclear, because too much strong flow coming from the apical. Okay, so what I did is, 
advancing the wire into the distal the connection, and then using the balloon. Of course, not making the dissection, because this is the dominant collateral flow. So softly, two atoms, three atoms, four atoms here, and using the, this, this channel is so big, so I choose the 2.5, and then injection. With this injection, we can see some connection from here. Important point of checking the collateral, which part of the this two lumen can see area. So this this uh, like corner can see area, and then also he, this segment. So this flow coming from the circumflex of, of course, and this flow must come from the septal channel. And then in detail checking, okay, this septal must have the some connection. This is almost invisible without the ballooning. But with the ballooning, we can see it. So I tried, why not moving? I did the antigrade, but antigrade, of course, they go to the subintima, so try the retrograde, and then using the, this channel. But this is tip injection. Cannot see the connection. Why? Because uh, this is a wrong channel, uh, wrong branch. So with the tip injection and pull back the microcaster, this is a going to wrong target. So again, pull back and see it. First wire going to this small branch. So we must come to the, this way. Yeah, yeah, middle part. Correct the tip in, uh, the wire root, and then again tip injection. Wow. This is not a straight view. So go to the, this is a cranial. Cranial is okay, the best for the proxima part, as I said. But uh, this part is already the mid part. So go to the straight area. This is straight area. More clear the architecture of the, this channel. And this channel shows small bending here. So I choose the wire of the SO03, even for the septa, but that's SO03. And SO03 wire, slowly but uh, advanced, like this. Another key point is that not too much push. Small push and the weight. Small push and the weight and the rotate. And then asking to the wire, which, which direction is a good? <laughs> I don't know, but uh, you know. <laughs> Got it. <laughs> and then the wire finally wire. find out the, the way to go down like this. Once jump, jump in. Which wire is slow? Slow, this is slow. <laughs> Ma, but so, but in this situation in the India, Ma, Sion. Sion. Should be used. And then finally, this way, uh, oh, going, going, going. Okay. And another important point you can see the VPC at the time finally advanced. Now, now, now. One, VPC there. So, VPC is a sign of channel damage. VPC and then the wire uh, microcaster resistance. At the time, you have to think about the risk of the channel rupture. But anyway, this one going. And then finally, I did the reverse cut, everything. And this is the final result. A very good result with rupture. This rupture is okay, in complete interceptor muscle. So leave it, and then nothing happened. But anyway, this is a the, for this representation, the main focus is how to assess. So please don't forget the straight looking view without the overlapping other branches, other coronaries, and the tip injection. Tip injection can avoid the overlapping and then make more nice the clear showing the architecture of the channels. And then after getting the nice information, we can get more success. Thank you for your attention.
Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Sumisuchi. You have made it uh, look so simple and so so nice. I, I, I don't think I have any question. I was telling him I'm going to ask questions, but I don't think now I have any question. At the moment, I don't know whether you want to ask anything. Or See, anything. in septal channels, do you use Suho wire at any point of time? Only any time or epicardial you use uh, Suho wire. But in septal channels, do you use? They're using the mainly Sion wire. Sion. Suho is to be used or something? Suho is the optional. optional. Like, like today, that this case, very the small bending or angle or a big corkscrew. At the time, I choose the Suho. But the mainly Sion is the, how to say, my better or successful, more the Suho because the septum is uh, making the resistance. Suho is too much floppy. Uh, not easy to go pass through. Uh, just, I have a question to you. You have applied the two millimeter balloon at the apex. Is it safe to apply at moderate pressure anything proximal to that or you always use it on the distal segment? Uh, one is the too much proximal, more the ischemia could be made. So the nice position for this particular case is inside the channel. And in this case, channel is very big one. My dominant collateral always have the nice size, so I can go down more and then do the 2.5. That is a 2.5. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, for the tip injection, uh, yes. tip injection. Yes. Sometimes we go. You want to go to a small channel. Yes. You, you cannot aspirate blood. Yes. Yes. So, Good point. Uh, then we pull back. Then mm. blood comes. Then it's too much above. You cannot mm. go deep. Mm. So what? Ma, for me, for me. That even the blood not coming back, I do the tip injection. It's okay? It's okay. I don't have the, any very big trouble, but sometimes stain. Okay, so stain. not so much recommended. Okay. Please do the, the after confirm the sucking, and yeah. then do, that is a safer. But okay. the more complicated situation, I don't want to put back the microcaster at the time slowly. Slowly. Mm. Very gently. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you so yeah. much. We move on. Uh, we move on to the next prominent speaker. Uh, let me invite Dr. Kenya Nasu on wire selection strategy and navigation of collateral channels. There might be some repetition, but sir, we want you to go through the full spectrum so we learn again. Please go ahead. Oh, it's here. <laughs> <laughs> we made you to run for one fifty meters. Uh, thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. So my topic is about yeah, selection strategy and the navigation of the collateral channel. But uh, uh, now is in Japan is I uh, quite often. I, I my opinion is a little bit different from the Sumizuji. As I showed the later, but I, the, my fa almost first choice is the wire is the so three nowadays. So that, uh, oh, uh, sorry. The my pre oh, uh, some part of the, my presentation is a little bit overlapped with uh, Dr. Smith's presentation, but anyway, that I will show you the how to select the uh, uh, collateral channel. So I show the data. I, uh, so important data is uh, our data. The Japanese expert registry. And uh, two, in these two years, we have uh, the 0.7 percent of the cardiac tamponade. It's almost case of the uh, this kind of the complication induced by the uh, uh, come from the, the channel injury. That we met in the channel injury in the 210, but the uh, 61 is a channel injury needed the hemostasis procedure. That's meaning the 30 percent of the, the channel perforation. So we need to do some uh, treatment to achieve the hemostasis. However, in the septal channel, the epical channel, instant of the in channel injury is almost similar. And also the, the uh, instance of the treatment required is this kind of the situation almost similar. But uh, so, uh, we should keep in mind, uh, if once is a very big channel perforation inside the apical channel, is a situation sometimes is very trouble. So the, as already the Dr. Smith has mentioned, but evaluation from the March angle view is very important. 
So I showed the case is this is aricranial. Uh, this is, is the RCC. You can see the some integrated flow. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, across the channel from the uh, septal to the PD branch. However, the, the distal part around there is not uh, it's not clear from the uh, aricranial. But from the aricoda view, is the channel morphology. The aricoda view can visualize the uh, channel morphology exactly like this. And also, this is case is LED CDO that you can see the some clutter flow from the RC to LED. So channel is very ambiguous. In the coder view, in the aerocranial view, is also is very difficult to identify the, the which is the best way. So in aerocranial view is also is very difficult to identify the the, the bifurcation. But the coder view is uh, finally we can find in the bifurcation around there. So the usually it aerocranial aerocodal is very useful to identify the channel morphology, but in some cases a different angle uh, uh, was needed to identify the, the channel morphology or the uh, bifurcation in the septal or the epicardial channel. So also in the visible channel is not always selectable. So this is uh, RCCTO. So you can see the very nice closer R. Now audio view is a chip injection. So everyone believe that this channel is promising, but uh, it's uh, we can see it has some is a different. Uh, something is a uh, uh, so I showed the audio view so. The already the uh, Dr. Smith is mentioned in the LO view is very important because in the LO view is uh, uh, morphology is totally different. So middle of the septal branch, the, there is a crank portion is a, so very bending the a tricky portion. So of course I started from the Swazer three that's shown in next year, but uh, finally I could not pass this uh, from looks promising channel. Now, fortunately, in this case, I could recognize from the undergrade, Li is a Gaia first, is go into the uh, PD branch. So it's okay, but the uh, uh, visible channel is a promise, looks promising channel is not always a promising. And also the careful evaluation is important also the uh, Already, uh, Simji Sensei is already mentioned about this kind of the issue. This is very long CDO. Is uh, CDO is being in just proximal uh, the orifice, and the main crater channel AC branch from the circumflex. So the almost uh, very bending and almost uh, direct communication from the circumflex to the AB branch. So. In the first attempt, they, of course, they tried to the integrate approach, but fail on. And uh, in, they tried to the, the channel tracking inside and the very bending circumflex channel, but the, of course, it's, it's, this kind of the channel is uh, uh, tracking is impossible. So I also uh, occluded the proximal part of the circumflex and checked the uh, left coronary angiogram again. So the fortunately we can find it a very tiny but very straight channel from the uh, diagonal to the AB branch, like this. So the chip injection is not unclear, but the, here is channel you can see. So the SO03 wire, very easy to go advanced. The finally is the Sozero City is very easy to go uh, to the uh, AB branch. So like this. So I checked it, the control injection that you can see is a, a wire is already is come up to the uh, this uh, PD and the AB bifurcation. 
So in the selection of the wire is, uh, my opinion is a little bit different. Is of course, Xion is a very, uh, is very good wire uh, to select the bifurcation, but uh, my choice, the my first choice always Swazil C nowadays. Of course, in the septal branch, is uh, sometimes Swazil C cannot go, but uh, uh, it's a very flexible wire. The at least in terms of the safety issue, is a so zero three is a promising. So, but the, sometimes we uh, in the septal channel and in the epicardial channel is there the, some small bifurcation. To select the bifurcation in the so zero three is very very difficult because is the chip is very short. So in this kind of the situation, the, I always use the shown or the shown brew. And finally, in the septal channel, is shown is not uh, useful. The I, I switch to the XDR, uh, of course, including the uh, septal septal surfing. And the, in the epicardial channel, also the we always study. I always study the sources, but uh, sometimes we need need to the shown brew or the shown. And the finally, the uh, I use the XDR with a small knuckle curve. So. So yesterday, I used uh, this kind of procedure for tracking in the epicardial channel. This is a DSR-RCC, a very long one. So I felt the anti-grade approach anyway. So that I switched to the red grade approach from the, this uh, epicardial channel. So you can see, is that in the epicardial channel, around there, here is a very small branch. You can see a very small branch. So that there is uh, some bifurcation around there. And also most difficult point is the distal part of the uh, Epica, uh, RB branch. You can see the, the like a pig tail uh, part. So that I started, of course, started from the SUO03, but I could not select the, this bifurcation. So I changed in the Xion is uh, shown uh, to select it, uh, this bifurcation. Uh, so 03 is very easy to go slip to the, this small branch. So I use the shun uh, to overcome the, this bifurcation, but the su, uh, shun cannot pass the, uh, this big tail part. So I finally, uh, the XDR with a small knuckle was needed. So finally, I can pass the, uh, this channel using by the Sozo 3 and the Shion in the XDR. Yeah, the, also, the wire is very, very important. I showed the one, but this is a very impression, impressive case. So this is circumflex CDO. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you can see it's almost direct communication from the AV branch to the circum uh, distal circumflex. But uh, also 10 years back, in Japan, I, we can use the field FC and XT. But the uh, field FC and XT uh, could not advance anymore around there. So I failed in the, this case because is this uh, circumflex CDO is uh, four centimeters of the length. So undergrade approach is very harsh by the undergrade approach is, was impossible. So but uh, five years later, is I tried again. Uh, that time, the uh, Shunburu is uh, available in Japan. And uh, Shunburu go advanced more than this story. And uh, Shunburu is a stretch that this pigtail portion. And finally, the Shunburu is can achieve the, the distal the to rumen. So the advancement wire is very important. The technique is very also important. But even though the high tech technique is we cannot we could not overcome is a ten years back. But five years back, uh, five years later, that we can overcome by uh, my, this is not my technique. This is a shown Bruce can pass the uh, this channel. So the progress of the uh, wire is very important part in the red grade uh, wire tracking. And also, the, I showed the one chip and the tricks to select the channel. 
So this is a, a LED CTO that you can see is a very promising channel from PD, from PD to LED. Oh. This one is about the angle is very acute. And there is a small, a small vessel, small bifurcation around in the, this bifurcation. So I try to select it, uh, this channel, but uh, very easy to go through to this small channel, or the sometimes the uh, wire is going into the proximal one. So yeah, maybe you frequent uh, met uh, this kind of the situation. So the, in this kind of the situation that we put the wire, is, this is actually the another one, but uh, we can use uh, this wire as a landmark to select it, uh, the appropriate channel like this. So this is chip injection. After selection of the channel, so we can select it, the, the target. The finally, I can select it, the, this channel. So this is summary, the, uh, the how to negotiate the channel, the evaluation of the channel is very important. Chip injection from the much angular mandatory to understand the channel morphology. And the uh, selection of the wire, the safer is better, I think. So that I always try to, the nowadays, the so zero thing. I'm sorry, the, I know that the, in India it is uh, not unbearable. So of course the shown is also is very useful. It can select the very small small bifurcation <coughs> inside in the channel, and the visible channel is not always selectable. Please be careful with small bifurcation in channel. The, the, the sometimes parallel wire technique using by the Crusade or uh, Sasuke is very useful. Thank you for your attention. Dr. Naso, I have a question for you. It's not related to this. But when you do this, suppose you land up with a perforation. Now, if you have a caravel or something, can you put any coil through the caravel? Or you, what, what sort of a microcatheter do you require? And what is the size of the coil that you choose? Uh, the, it, uh, so, Cook uh, embryo coil. 14,000 or 18,000? 18, uh, 18,000, but uh, uh, the fine cross is available. Using the fine cross, we can put the uh, 88. Eight, it says on Hirari cook coils. Okay. Yes. Okay. So you use the crusade inside the septal collaterals? Mm, yes. And very small, it'll, there's no problems? I, I don't think so. Yeah. I think if there is no, no more questions, we'll go to the next presentation. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Okay. Yeah, can we now call on Dr. Dougal to present his uh, uh, this thing on anti-grade vessel preparation for retrograde PCI, when and how? Dr. Dougal, please. Good morning. Uh, my topic has been made easy by a live demonstration <coughs> where they have shown how the vessel is prepared for a retrograde <coughs> entry. The most important thing is if your wire retrogradely enters the true lumen in the anti-grade and true lumen and the anti-grade catheter, this is not required. This is always required by our bilateral approach. Now what is, by definition, what is an anti-grade preparation? It's a failure of luminal retrograde crossing, which means that the wire mitigates within the sub-intimal space or fails to advance within the intima due to hard block, requires additional procedural steps which involves anti-grade guide wire navigation within the CTO segment, which is termed as anti-grade preparation. Now, anti-grade preparation is creating an anti-grade dissection space using an anti-grade wire and a balloon. Now, before we go into this, this is what has been shown even in the imaging summit that if the wire, both the wires are in the intima, it is easy to connect. Similarly, if the, both the wires are in the sub-intimal space, as shown on the, your right lower segment, it is easy to connect. 
but if you have the anti-grade wire in the intima and the retro wire in the sub-intimal space, there you require a larger balloon. At times, you get an evidence what size of balloon to use by the knuckle wire or by an intravascular ultrasound, dilate a balloon so you can connect the sub-intimal space retrograde to the true lumen anti-grade. The last is when the wire, the retrograde wire is in the intima and the, red, the true, the, uh, the anti-grade wire in the, in, the true, in the false lumen. Now this is, we have to go and make it one of the previous ones so that you can connect together. Now, why the retrograde is used as a primary retrograde when you have an ambiguous gap or a stumpless gap, so you do not know where to go, or an osteal occlusion, long occlusions, severe proximal tortuosity and calcification, small, a poorly visualized distal vessel, CTO which is difficult to engage, such as anomalous coronary artery, an occlusion in distal major branch, and patient with impaired LV function, uh, sorry, renal function, where you have to use less of contrast and a retrograde procedure may be better. Now, these are the certain words which we use in, you know, anti-grade preparation. What is, now this terminology is base of operation. Now, what is base of operation? Here, most of our attention, our efforts are diverted and that is the proximal cap. Yeah, okay. Now, this is where we like to connect and if you, with now, as you saw, using a guide liner, you can shift the base of operation downwards into the anti-grade direction. Then you have the ambiguous cap, where we do not know where to pierce. Here you require an ultrasound guidance, which has been shown in imaging also techniques, that you put into a small branch, see where the lumen of the, tr the true lumen lies and puncture there. Or there are other methods described as scratch and go. Here you take a corsair or a fine cross catheter, use a very stiff wire, maybe a confluenza, give it a three to four millimeter bend and pierce proximal to the cap so you can enter the sub-intimal space and then go <coughs> downwards with a knuckle wire. Then there is also known as base, balloon assisted sub-intimal entry. Here you take a balloon in the proximal portion of the vessel, one is to one balloon, non-compliant, dilated at high pressure, so you create some dissections and inside this dissection you can go and then again change the wire as required. Then you come as the impenetrable caps. Now this is sometimes very long standing CTOs you come across where you do not know how to pierce it. Here you require good support, a long sheath which may be 45 centimeter, a support catheter, what you call it under bent catheter which may be amplatzer or multipurpose, a balloon anchoring technique, and then with a stiff wire, you can pierce the impenetrable cap. The third important thing is a laser, which you saw today, a uh, uh, lecture on laser. Now, sometimes when you have an impenetrable cap, you can use laser, but you should have an expertise to use the laser so that you can avoid complication. And lastly is the hydraulic dissection. You take a fine cross or a corsair, take it down into the artery and give an injection. This is also known as a Carolino technique where you give one to two cc of injection slowly so that you cause a dissection. And this dissection should not be what is described as mushroom cloud dissection, it should be a dissect, small dissection, and then you can go forward and pierce the thing. Now once you have done, you've done a balloon and dilatation, or you use an IVAS guidance to see the, where the wire is going so that you can meet and connect with the retrograde wire. Guide wire extension is a very important, which you saw today, uh, Dr. Yamazaki using it. He could not get into the true lumen, so he got a balloon in the distal vessel and got the guide liner down and entered the, the that was uh, Godzilla from Boston. Stent assisted cart, that was another way you could put a stent there and then try to get inside the stent and sometimes confluent balloon techniques. Now this is one of the patient you see Anti-grade preparation was done, and then the retrograde, you see here. Now, if you see the channels, this is what is known as the B hump. It's a very easy channel to take, and very you could easily go into that channel. And once you have reached there, the preparation is already done. You inflate a balloon, 
and then you try to enter the wire. Now the point of entering into the wire, we have done the preparation, the wire should be parallel to each other and dancing with each other. That is the point which is more likely you can enter into the vessel. Now this is shown with an anti-grate balloon is dilated, a dissection is made and a retrograde entered into it. And this was the final outcome of that patient. Now this was another where, as uh, Dr. Somasurchi showed, that this had an epicardial collateral and the multiple channels were tried. He's got a stent in the LAD as, as well as stent in the circumflex. He has, uh, from the LAD, epicardial collaterals are there, which you can see uh, torches, but not the torches that he showed. So we initially tried the, the septal collaterals, but unsuccessful then the vessel preparation was done. Now this is with Ramplard's catheter, a corsair, and a Gaia two wire. It's a very calcified vessel. Multiple attempts were taken to cross. It was difficult to cross. And we made some progress. You can see the two views being seen. And after making progress, we thought this wire, as for the moment it's concerned, it was in the RV branch. So we had to pull it back. It's in the RV branch. So pull it back and again tried the anti-grade preparation with a Gaia 3 made some progress with Gaia 3 and then we took the fine uh, the Corsair but it could not travel so got a balloon down and dilated with a small using the RV branch for an anchoring balloon technique and this dilatation was done slowly the wire progressed a small balloon initially 1.25 then 2 millimeter balloon this is a 2 millimeter balloon and then again came back with the Corsair, and then the retrograde injection was taken, and then this epicardial channel was taken after preparing the proximal, the anti-grade, and here you see, now this is th through the retrograde channel, and again, uh, the wire is the same, and we made some progress, made a check injection there with the Corsair to see we are in the true lumen, and then gradually progressed, trying to reach the balloon, multiple attempts were done. Here we see we are, we are some way away from the, so we had to take a stiffer wire, change the direction and enter. Now this is a Gaia wire and here could enter into the true lumen and then the, here you can see we have entered and then the preparation was done and finally exchanged with an RG3 wire and the procedure was completed. Now this is the final procedure. Now this is what uh, was shown. You take an anti-grade balloon, dilate it, and then you push the MAC catheter, which may be Godzilla, or it may be uh, mother and child, or it may be a heart rail, and retrograde wire is then taken into. So here the importance is you avoid traveling a stiff wire in the lesion, so you can decrease the distance of the stiff wire travel. This is what, in fact, what is uh, Dr. Yamazaki showed. This is the guideliner. This is where it is crossed, but the wire wouldn't go, and you see it is further separated out. So guideliner, after inflating the balloon, which is an anchor balloon, you can take the guideliner in, and then this is the final result. Now this, I was uh, recently in Japan uh, for a CTO, club. The reverse cart, they were have dis they are thinking of, you know, this is what is known as the conventional recart, where you make a loop of the retrograde wire, take it, dilate, integrate with a big balloon and enter and make a connection. This is where a balloon dilatation is done and this is a retrograde knuckle wire and this is the eye was showing the subintimal space. The another terminology now is the contemporary reverse cart because with the availability of Gaia wire, you can go retrograde, take a anti-grade preparation, take a small balloon and pierce this balloon towards from the Gaia wire. This is considered as contemporary cart. This is what is the contemporary cart preparation. Now the other thing is the modified reverse cart. Here you do not take the balloon right down, you dilate in a normal, it's something like a base what is I've said, you take it into a small branch, dilate a balloon so you have some intimal dissection and you can get a retrograde wire 
So the importance of this is, in this technique, subintimal dissection is created intentionally at the disease segment proximal to the CTO entry, that is the before the CTO. So in other words, anti-grade preparation is where wires, balloon, mother and child, stains are used to prepare the anti-grade vessel so that a connection with a retrograde wire can be made. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much, Dr. Dugal. Uh, we will move on to the last topic. Uh, we will. Uh, we have Dr. Surya Prakash Rao, our Indian expert. Huh? Okay, on contemporary reverse card technique. Uh, um, after the fantastic meeting, the flag end of the last few hours of the meeting, okay. I thought. Uh, Better it's a, a caution, uh, not to discourage anybody, it's a caution uh, that everybody should exercise in doing the CTO PCI. Um, so don't worry about the too many complications written here, uh, but you should be able to face them and prepare for them. So there are certain uh, cardiac uh, complications and there are extra cardiac complications. And the mostly, the thing is the coronary perforation, either the target vessel or distant target vessel, channels, and uh, cardiac tamponade, which I, I will discuss each one. A CTO PCA is a different ball game. Remember, for this, you need hardware. Yes, patient needs and you need patience. Without these three things, I think never attempt a complex CTO PCA. The most important thing is the left main injury whenever you're using the amplus guiding catheters. For that matter, some of the uh, extra backup catheters with a hard tip also. That's why the choice of the guiding catheter makes very important because it is disastrous either at the beginning of the procedure or at the end of the procedure. This is one of the cases done long back. I already asked TLC2O when they're attempting and we had this uh, dissection. Ultimately, we have to end up with a crush technique and uh, do a left main stenting. Fortunately, because the wire is already crossed into the lady, I am fortunate I can put the stent and do a left main stenting, a bailout stenting done. This is another case. This is a difficulty in cannulation in the angiogram itself, which we should have remembered. There is very much a difficulty in cannulating during angiogram. There is some high origin left system. And once uh, we engaged the EBU catheter, I think this time, he made the first shot itself. Uh, this is what is happened. A long spiral dissection in the left main, extending to the circumflex, and this uh, surviving on the circumflex vessel, remember, and it's a real nightmare. Uh, and uh, don't remove the guiding. And a large guiding needs a soft tip inside holes, remember, to prevent this. And we managed that uh, with a stenting, which did not show, the patient survived. This is a channel injury. Don't worry about this channel injury immediately. See that. Keep the echo machine in the cat lab, whether it is outside the vessel or inside the hematoma, very important. And most of the things, as our senior expert from Japan told, you can manage conservatively unless there is a hemodynamic compromise. And then you may need to manage with uh, some coils or uh, mm. but. At the end of the procedure, remember to give an injection. That's what uh, all these procedures, retrograde procedures, uh, should be done with a, either a guiding injection or a selective injection, we should see. So the right channel selection and uh, the selective injection with uh, this you can see here. A selective injection with ideal wire cross. This is very important. We have learned so much that what is the ideal wire to cross a channel. 
and how to select a channel. These two, you can prevent this injury. Now, this is another very important, uh, very rare, but uh, it can occur. It happened uh, two times in my 10-year uh, CTO, this thing. This, this patient will be quite stable only, but maintaining low pressures. You have seen the leak. It's sealed, absolutely. Uh, but the patient uh, is not comfortable with a little hypotension and uh, some vague chest pain and all. This is septal hematoma. Uh, uh, mostly conservative management. It is very bothering for the doctor and the patient. Uh, but uh, uh, there's no uh, uh, actual aggressive treatment for this. But until the patient is discharged, you will be worried why he's having pain. And the complications management tools we should have the coils, as explained, I usually keep the cook coils, but uh, EV3 coils and uh, the 2 millimeter to 10 is ideal for the septals. And you can make the drop with a 4 French uh, dedicated catheter given by them or the fine cross. You can. And the other important thing is embolization particles. Interventional radiologists commonly use these things, and uh, I think we should have also in the tools. Is another, whenever you're doing the retrograde procedures, be cautious, the pressure drops, hemodynamic compromise, first thing, you check the donor injection. Very important, the patient having a, uh, a dissection of the right coronary artery here. So immediately we have to stent it. And a donor guiding deep throating, very dangerous sometimes. That's why at the end of the procedures, go to a cardal view, see the guiding injection, unnoticed dissections can be catastrophic once patient is shifted. So donor artery dissection is a dreaded complication. Use guiding with side holes. Avoid deep floating as a guide while withdrawing the core CRN devices, which Dr. Amani has shown that he pulled out the donor artery guiding while withdrawing the core CR. And it needs a prompt stenting, don't hesitate, because, uh, and the ACT check is one of the case, a live demonstration case, and I'm doing, I finished the CTO, but the end of the procedure, this is what happened, the flow, and the ACT given value is totally different, so I have to, we have to depend on the lab values, but sometimes these things can happen, and uh, every often our ACT check is very important, this patient will manage with the thrombosuction catheter, thrombosuction catheter, and uh, given G2B3 inhibitor, which we are not supposed to give in the CTO PCA, but there is no other way to come out. So keep the ACT more than 300, and we manage it like this. So the coronary perforation, as you see, the frank streaming of the contrast through exit hole larger than one millimeter, that is most dangerous. You can see some complication to the cavity, need not worry much. The extravasation also need not worry much. This is one thing. You see, this is a through and through with a high pressure dilatation. And he needs immediate pericardial synthesis and uh, a covered stent if needed. So this is another perforation. What when we are doing a retrograde procedure, you see it is leaking to the RV cavity. So need not worry much about this. And uh, just follow the patient with the uh, echocardiogram. And always keep a pericardiosynthesis tray. And uh, this is very important. And an uh, echocardiogram near your cat lab. So, uh, as explained, the coil embolization, instead, I explained how to inject the thrombus by Dr. Sumit. And um, these are the coils which you can deliver uh, either through a fine cross or a Corvel, or you can do a dedicated full French catheter, if needed, if there's a hemodynamic. Don't be fast and to put a coil immediately, you see a extra visitation. Usually, they are okay, septal. Epicardial is a little risky. Covered stents. We are very aggressive in putting the covered stents in the beginning, but I realize it now, and most often, uh, you just try keeping the balloon inflation, prolonged balloon inflation, low pressure, and control the major artery leaks, uh, and only use the covered stent because their outcomes in the follow-up is not good. Uh, so, but keep in the cath lab always. The standard is a three 
size are 3.5 cobalt cents. They need, some of them are available with six French, mostly seven French there. Is better for a, a cover stand, which is a little rigid device. So CTO segments demand high pressure dilatation. A prolonged low pressure balloon inflations for corner leaks is very important. Repeated echo for pericardial effusions and tamponade. Don't jump for cover stents. Type 3 perforation with hemodynamic compromise in its cover stents. Slow leak, always remember, check the echocardiogram next day also. Sometimes distally parked uh, wires can cause slow leaks and can produce tamponade the other day. So important to have a follow-up echo. And this is one case. We have done the uh, CTO, this thing, but when we have done high pressure dilatation, there's a perforation. Yes, we have put a cover stent here. Unfortunately, while uh, withdrawing, the balloon got stuck. And uh, uh, at that time, we thought it's over because it's a retrogradely filling vessel, patient is stable. But I got a doubt with how much catheter is remaining uh, in the body. Subsequent, we got a CT angio done for the patient. We have seen that good length of the remaining catheter and hanging up to the celiac artery, if you see. So there's no other way here. We just uh, uh, cut it at the ostium, which should be done by the surgeon. Uh, so it's surgery done electively because the patient is stable. We are fortunate. And uh, dense calcific CTO segments, uh, foreign body entrapment can occur like this. So snares are for foreign body retrieval. And when you take the wire, retrogate wire with the snares, sometimes it may not come into the artery, uh, the guiding catheter, then you have to use the snares. And uh, always, uh, you know, this uh, regular management, like any foreign body in any coronary intervention, the EN snare or goose neck snare, two other things. But the key for large body is 20 millimeter snares minimum. So EN snare is the uh, interlaced nitinol loops. And uh, mostly they are compatible seven French. They say six French, but I, we face a problem with six French. Seven French is ideal for the big snares. Uh, and, uh, and keep the, uh, in the brachiocephalic area it is easy. Uh, I, I, I um, very, very rarely happened, it, we call the surgeon to manage, except that one case we had the uh, um, balloon broken catheter. Uh, but uh, I always make friendship with my surgical colleagues uh, and keep them near and away. This is a case of rota with the CTO PCA, and we have to go for a larger sheath. The procedure completed, but you see, uh, uh, at the groin. So never uh, forget your procedure is over, but the next part is in the your uh, critical care unit uh, in the groin. And this can be a retroperitoneal or it can be in the lower below the inguinal ligament. It needs a CP stent here and uh, have to cover that to avoid the uh, hemodynamic compromise. So a vascular access problems also can occur, but uh, we can always. And lastly, the radiation thing, very important. Minimize the fluoroscopy usage, limit the cine angiography, use the low magnification, and use low frame rate, 7.5. And uh, very important, uh, we use the rad pad. Nowadays, nowadays we are using it. They say the scattered radiation will come down by 40%. And uh, injecting the CTO collateral donor vessel before starting the CINI angio, minimize the radiation like that. Uh, and shields always use, as everybody uses, the neck collar, particularly provide your thyroid, your back, your legs, not only you, for the patient. And see the radiation exposure every time, keep an eye on that. Or somebody should uh, make you say that uh, this much is the radiation, this is the fluoro time and always separate the procedure attempts by adequate time intervals. If you do a CT angio with the contrast, better give it two, three weeks time, always a safe. A staged CTO procedures also minimize the radiation. And this is a rat pad, bismuth antimony product we are regularly using in the cat lab nowadays. All the cases in our lab use that. And uh, lastly, to minimize the complications, uh, a CT angio will guide you uh, before the procedure in a complex, long calcific CTOs where problems are anticipated. 
uh, and uh, I was, as you said, now rhetorically passing the wi guide wire or anti-grade, positioning the wires, puncturing the clock, morphology, all these really I was saves. Not only that, it saves the contrast also. So as you know, contrast also, you limit the contrast to 250 to 300 ml and see the creatinine level next 40, 24 hours. Any rise, keep a follow-up of the patient and avoid me giving too much contrast in renal disease, low DFR, and patients with uh, heart failure or diabetes. And creatinine clearance is very important and uh, don't underestimate the contrast-induced damage because once you cross the wire and you are going to achieve success, it is a human tendency to continue the procedure and finish with stenting. We can't stop that. But remember, keep a... This is all the... Um, so, so, be ready for uh, any eventuality and uh, CTO can be done successfully uh, only if you take all the precautions and uh, a toolbox you should have like a sheaths, guiding catheters, guide wires, micro catheters, knees, wires, complication management, PCA for IVAS usage, all these. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Um, we must congratulate Dr. Suri Prakash for giving this extensive details of common and uncommon complications so nicely, and it was very educative. Well, one doubt, actually, uh, side hole catheter, whether it is a false security or really is it useful? Side we, hole catheter. Which one? Side holes. Uh, side holes uh, definitely protects the, like your uh, conus artery, sinus artery, that protects the ischemia ischemia in that area for the right coronary artery, but the extra contrast you will be giving with the side holes. Number That's one, actually, problem. you may feel it is a false security also. We may uh, deeply engaging and... Uh, sometimes your, and the deep throating comes, so your pressure damping always worries you. You will be concentrating more on the damping of the pressures than the procedure. Thank you very much, Dr. Surya Prakash Rao. With the stage, we can, yeah. we can conclude the session yeah. and uh, yeah. go through the live cases.